Hi everyone, uh, it's Marco for Polygonal. Uh, today we have the third uh, meeting for Public Makers, which is a European project on open data for young people. Uh, what we want to do as a as a as a project, as a European project, is to uh, raise awareness on open data. So particularly um, how to how we produce data, how we can harness the power of data as uh, youth organizations and not only because what we want to do as a as public makers project is to reflect on how data influence our everyday lives and how we can influence uh, the decision making uh, making at local level or um, European level national level according to the subjects and to the um, uh, the targets we want um, so the, our main topic, as you might under, have understood, as you will be able to see in our platform, uh, is uh, open data. So open data are those data which uh, can be accessed by anyone, which are human readable as well as machine readable. And they can be reused in different ways to give specific answers. As public makers, we want to use uh, data uh, as uh, like something to give meaningful answers. Today, uh, we discuss crowdsourcing and mapathons as the most fun and the most interesting part um, of open data. Uh, so I prepared for you a, a little presentation to uh, get you know in the, in the topic and to um, be able somehow to repeat and to reflect how to use open data and the, and the crowdsourcing strategies, even mapathons for our youth organizations. Um, so uh, let's uh, let's begin. Let's begin with uh, the uh, you know the today today's talk. Um, there we go. Uh, so we uh, so we start with crowdsourcing and mapathons. Um, as you as you can see, uh, the power of open data to solve problems and show patterns is our goal. Uh, basically, we want to show uh, how to visualize data and how to um, make them available for our wider community. Um, so let's uh, start with a very popular app, uh, which uh, you know, I want to show you, uh, which is Strava. Uh, yeah, uh, Strava is uh, a famous app for runners. So it shows uh, since uh, it, you know since uh, 2017, it has shown uh, different patterns and the uh, most famous routes, uh, the most used routes uh, by runners uh, through a heat map. As you can see, uh, it's uh, mostly used in Europe and in North, uh, North and South America. Um, so, uh, what you know, I want to show here uh, is uh, that this tracking uh, app uh, was uh, somehow involved in showing the secret location of the US, uh, US Army uh, because of the heat map. Um, in fact, when we use data, and particularly when we uh, share them, we have a huge power, which is the power of transparency, the power of making others understand uh, hidden patterns. And particularly, uh, that's uh, how Strava, at the end of the day, um, Show, uh, showed how uh, the, the military uh, secret bases uh, were kept where they were uh, positioned. Why? Uh, because basically and uh, the, the soldiers were running around uh, specific areas in the, in the world and Strava uh, show, showed these, uh, these patterns. And this is a simple example of how data can be powerful, but at the same time also threatening, because they reveal patterns that we normally we wouldn't understand. Um, so this uh, very interesting effect that you know, it's uh, just a little uh, introduction to today's uh, work, uh, which is uh, crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing as a word was introduced in 2005 by Wired, the famous magazine, and it's uh, based on two words, so crowd and outsourcing. Uh, because um, 
uh, crowdsourcing is, uh, first of all, an internet-based collaborative uh, activity. And uh, uh, basically, uh, it has from the one side a crowd which uh, wants to do something. So it's required, it's asked to do something, which is the outsourcing part. So, in other terms, is when an entity, a group, uh, and uh, you know, or a business uh, wants to, uh, you know, want, they want to uh, endeavor a collective effort uh, to solve an issue. So, uh, let's say we are an NGO. We want to uh, uh, we want to resolve a specific task, and we ask to volunteers or to citizens to uh, solve that problem. Uh, to uh, tackle an issue. So in this way, we have to uh, say, we have to tell people what they should do to answer to our mission. Uh, so this is crowdsourcing. I mean, in the general and the most generic outline. But let's do some examples so that we understand better from the, you know, we already talked about the Strava app. Uh, but maybe with Wikipedia, we'll be more familiar with the concept of crowdsourcing. Basically, Wikipedia uh, is uh, the most famous, uh, the most known um, encyclopedia online uh, where everyone can contribute. So uh, there's a, a crowdsourcer, so there's, a, a, you know, Wikipedia, uh, which asks to the rest of the world, so to all the peers, to crowd the information. To do what? To uh, solve a problem, which is sh to achieve shared knowledge, shared and accessible knowledge. Um, as you can see uh, in Wikipedia, there's also a license, so Credit Commons license. Um, if you discover more publicmakers.eu, you will be able to understand also uh, the different types of, uh, of licenses. But this is not uh, today's talk, so I, w I invite you to go to our platform. Um, so, what Wikipedia uh, made, I mean, what makes Wikipedia so special is this crowd which answers to uh, the specific problem of shared and accessible knowledge and uh, which is trusted, so, uh, so has a higher reputation. In fact, when we uh, search on the internet for information, Wikipedia is probably one of the first results in, uh, especially when we ask for, um, when we uh, look for definitions. Um, Another example uh, of crowdsourcing uh, is our work as uh, as an organization we did. Uh, we are uh, as polygonal. Uh, we are uh, based in Italy, and what we uh, what we do among uh, the other activities is civic monitoring, and um, particularly this uh, activity activity uh, that I'm showing you. Um, which is the mapping uh, of the stages of the use of digital identity and digital payment among the public administrations in our region uh, was uh, a task uh, coordinated by one of our uh, staff members. So uh, what, we did, what we did here um, was to analyze a certain amount of patterns and to put them uh, in a um, uh, in a platform, so in a medium is what we uh, what we call medium. Uh, so Wikipedia is a medium. In this case, we use the data wrapper, which is another medium. Um, and here, uh, what we did was to crowd. Uh, so with a crowd to source what the uh, the digital usage. Uh, so the usage of digital payments uh, apps and so on by the public administration. So we had to investigate. So this is crowdsource. So crowdsource uh, is a very important monitoring tool. Um, there are many definitions out there about uh, crowd, uh, crowdsourcing. There are even 40, uh, more than 40 definitions. Uh, here uh, I share with you one of the, uh, the most comprehensive or probably the most um, uh, 
uh, correct one, uh, which was done by Enrique Estellas Arrodas and Fernando Gonzalez Ladron de Guevara in uh, 2012. Um, here, uh, basically, uh, the definition of crowdsource becomes uh, uh, much more clear. Um, uh, why is important crowdsourcing data? Uh, first of all, there's uh, the participation of people. So many people, many users are asked for uh, legal tasks to be achieved and to solve a greater goal, um, particularly to uh, achieve something which has a benefit benefit in society. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, different uh, relations between uh, the initiator of the crowdsource, which we can call uh, the crowdsourcer, and the rest of the people which adhere to the call for a crowdsourcing. Um, so crowdsourcing eventually uh, has many uh, ways to uh, to be achieved. It can be used for businesses, for nonprofits, for states. It can be done also individually uh, as an informal as informal groups and so on. The, the most important part of crowdsourcing is the plan. Is about the strategy around it, um, particularly uh, in uh, 2000. 12, uh, eight main elements of crowdsourcing uh, were uh, mapped uh, and to uh, really make it meaningful. So let's say we are a youth organization and we want to involve others um, to, uh, you know, to solve a specific problem, to achieve something uh, at our local community. We have to think on how to uh, improve uh, our work. We have to, uh, I mean, to improve our work, we have to really think on how to engage people and where we want to go and how to uh, make the overall process easy. So as you can see, there are these eight uh, elements uh, which are uh, very um, uh, crucial. So we have to understand the crowd, we have to understand who we are, so the initiator and the process. Uh, so the process means uh, which call we want to uh, implement and which medium we want to uh, work with. Um, so we can start our crowdsource activity, of course. Uh, I want to uh, first, uh, firstly do some uh, example about uh, Crowdsource in practical terms. Um, there's a uh, there's a, an important part of crowdsource, which is uh, there's no uh, let's say one for all solution, uh, and this is uh, important to really think of our plan. And uh, another last, I mean, a last remark about crowdsource before going into the practical parts of crowdsourcing is that is is that it's different than open source. Um, as open source is more uh, when everyone really benefits of it in terms of uh, practical outcomes, uh, in terms of uh, crowdsource, the benefits are of an organization mainly because uh, there's a, uh, the initiator which organizes somehow all the activities. When in open source, if you contribute to the development of the program, uh, you are a peer and you will uh, immediately benefit of it. So in the crowdsource, it takes a bit more time to, uh, let's, see, let's say, see the result, but eventually it will come. Um, so crowdsource. Let's, uh, let's be practical. Let's try to really understand how to use crowdsource for our youth organization. Uh, let's say we want to solve a specific problem. Let's say we want to, um, we want to uh, uh, define how, uh, how to create, uh, uh, you know, something meaningful for our community. Uh, so we call people. We call people to contribute and share um, uh, our uh, and share their pa passion, their, uh, their tools, their vision, and uh, answer to a specific problem. Um, so let's let's go in deep. Let's go to the plan. Let's let's go to the practical part. Um, 
why do you want to do a crowdsource action? So uh, let's, uh, let's ask yourself who you are and why people want to be with you, uh, how they will be compensated. So if we have volunteers in our youth organization and let's say we want to map all the, um, all the uh, uh, ancient portals of our historical center, uh, maybe you want to pay them a breakfast, maybe you want to um, involve them in some uh, vouchers and so on. And why, uh, how you want to do it? So this is another question. Uh, so volunteers uh, that you want to involve, do they have to use mobile? Do they have to stay home? Uh, how do you want to do it? Uh, how can it influence other actors? So let's say, uh, let's go back to the example of the ancient portals. Uh, why uh, mapping the portals? Um, maybe because you want to involve the public administration of your neighborhood in some uh, historical um, action, uh, like some tourism action, or maybe you want simply to uh, support the public, um, the public archive to uh, complete their work and so on. So this is like why you want to do it. And have you planned a budget? So of course, like uh, crowdsource for youth organization is mainly done as a volunteering activity, but still volunteers. Uh, you know, have a compensation, need a compensation, because that's how people are empowered, or you might uh, have to rent some equipment or some sub subscription, some platform, this is very important. So let's go to, um, you know, prepare for you a specific example, like some practical example of crowdsourcing, and particularly uh, regarding the, uh, regarding the, uh, in what it's called mapathon, and it will come there in one second. Just to recap, so your reputation is important, the call you want to do for volunteers and for your target group, uh, the tool you're going to use, so mobile, which platform, which app, and the crowd you want to engage with. So that means who is going to be interested in your call. Uh, so, uh, the example, uh, let's say we, there are too many architectural barriers in your neighborhood and you want to make a change, you are fed up with it. And uh, crowdsource is a great tool uh, as a methodology to answer to, to this problem. Um, you want to involve basically people to reflect about this, but you don't want simply to have, uh, let's say, a um, uh, public debate. So you want to have something, uh, vis you know, visual, something that everyone can access, understand, and then denounce. So this is the part of the engagement, and card source is a really great strategy. So. Your uh, strategy starts simply from checking on existing open data. Uh, as we said at the beginning, open data are uh, statistics, basically, uh, most of the time, which are shared according to lessons uh, by organizations, by states, and so on. So you might have a look on the, how open data are kept, find architectural barriers, and at the same time, you want to create your own open data. Because probably in your neighborhood, there are no open data about, about this. So you we want to create uh, an interesting um, strategy. Uh, so you want to make the call. Uh, so make clear what people will be doing. So in this case, we, we're going to map the architectural barriers in our town. Uh, what the final goal is, in our case, is to uh, raise awareness on the barriers that uh, our town has, our neighborhood has, or our, our zone and so on. Why doing so? Why? Because we want to have our administration to change the attitude about something. Uh, what sort of compensation so uh, there will be so so basically that means uh, how the volunteers will get have benefit maybe they're gonna learn some app maybe they're gonna have some free training and so on what problem to solve as we said uh, we're gonna solve in this case uh, the uh, you know 
the lack of data about architectural barriers. And at the same time, we're going to tell the rest of the world that our town is not good, doing well. Um, so which platform? Uh, so uh, you can either stay home. Uh, let's say you want to use maybe uh, OpenStreetMap or Google Maps. You want to move around, uh, staying home. But uh, this is not maybe uh, uh, the right way. Or maybe you want to organize a, a walk in your uh, in your town so you can combine basically uh like some interesting activities like um an historical talk about your uh, historical center but at the same time you want to map some architectural barriers with your volunteers so in this case in this way you um you stress your role you really take your um uh, your reputation on you improve how your image is. Um, so uh, you have to choose at this uh, point which app, which platform to use to uh, make simple, uh, you know, the reading of data at the end of the day. Um, here, uh, it is, uh, with this slide, I simply uh, took uh, some uh, very popular apps that can help you. There's a UMAP, uh, Mapillary, uh, there's Google Map, uh, there is uh, OpenStreetMap. Uh, these are, uh, all, you know, free uh, tools that you can use and uh, that are portable with your mobile. Choosing the right tool is, um, makes uh, things, uh, let's say, clearer uh, for the fact that some uh, volunteers and the rest of the people will be able to see the, uh, their data straight away. So that means at the end of the day, when, once we have mapped uh, with our mobile making photos and tagging the architectural barriers, there will be a map that you can share, that you can tell the world, look, these are unacceptable. This is our uh, crowdsource, these are our open data, and we can use them to uh, reflect on how to improve the strategies at a local level. So how to present it? Uh, a map, as we said, it's uh, crucial uh, So for anyone to make things accessible. Um, as you can see, uh, crowdsourcing is also a great tool for youth organizations to strengthen their position, uh, particular, particularly to um, uh, decide on things in an informed way. Um, let's say we want to do a project on um, cultural items in our town. Uh, we might see uh, crowdsourcing as a strategic tool because we might be the first ones to map something and to engage others to enrich what we have mapped. So in this way, crowdsourcing can become really a department within youth organizations and uh, strengthen really putting them at the center of, uh, of the action. And that's what public makers is done for. Um, particularly, uh, we as public makers, as uh, organizations participating in public makers, uh, we want to uh, see this strong bond between uh, digital innovation and social innovation. So uh, having the youth organizations at the center. Um, a specific type of crowdsourcing, which is really, really fun, but at the same time really uh, powerful, is Mapathon. And Mapathon is, uh, is a combination of mapping and a marathon. So basically, it's when you gather people in the, in the same room um, to uh, fill some gaps. Um, particularly, uh, it, it's uh, it's um, uh, very used as uh, I mean as a tool for the so-called map gap. Um, let's let's imagine a different African. Uh, areas or Asian areas, um, the quality of the maps is not so uh, high. So uh, different uh, elements, different um, uh, details are missing around. Uh, while with mapathons, you can somehow fill this gap and involve volunteers to, uh, to digital volunteering. 
um, and the effects of a mapathon, even if they are not, uh, you know, uh, noticeable and, uh, immediately, uh, they are very, very powerful in the long term because, uh, let's say, humanitarian organizations can exploit them, uh, can exploit the data which are mapped by the volunteers according to the uh, satellite uh, images. Uh, as you can see from this uh, from this uh, PowerPoint, um, in case of disaster intervention and the rebuilding, uh, mapathons are very very useful to recon reconstruct to uh, shape again the uh, the uh, the sense of the community and the data uh, because you really have to answer straight straightforward to. Um, to uh, let's say an emergency, and you don't have time to wait for um, satellite images, but you have to uh, map uh, all the uh, items which have been destroyed. So mapathons can be used in different ways. You can be in a room, you can walk in the streets, you can uh, uh, take volunteers and move around an area. Uh, I want to show you a, a very cool, uh, you know, uh, um, activity which is uh, which is the autumn. Autumns. Uh, basically, it's a humanitarian um, humanitarian mapping, uh, and it's a global community. And uh, you really, uh, you know, have fun. At the same time, um, you can create something very, very uh, important. Uh, with open street map uh, as a task with its uh, task manager you can organize mapathons and support this digital humanitarian uh, action uh, and uh, support with little tasks a greater goal which is to support ngos working in different um, different world areas to improve their job and to better reach out the, uh, the final target group. Um, as if you access on, on the platform, you will be able to check and see the different functions. And I really want you to, you know, um, try it. And as youth organizations to, uh, you know, it can be a new challenge, but also a new opportunity to, um, involve your volunteers at the same time to learn some digital skills basically so um, just a few remarks be before you know uh, ending today's uh, webinar is uh, when we uh, do uh, when we want to work with open data and particularly to uh, communicate them to the wider community uh, it's important to have your vision clear it's important to explain people why you want to do something and what for. So uh, that means either in the direction of your organization and in the direction of the rest of the world and your community. Um, the usage of crowdsourcing mapathons is, uh, is to engage, is to make people reflect on, uh, on the activities and on the data and what on the current problems. Uh, the other third point is the power of open data and particularly on the fact that we are creators of data. We, uh, as individuals, can create data, can influence uh, governments, can uh, enhance transparency. This is very, very important. If you access our public makers um, course, you will check all these uh, all these. Uh, text and information, and you will uh, receive very valuable tools and, uh, and uh, exercises that you can replicate in your own organizations. Finally, communicate your results. Uh, many youth organizations do amazing stuff, uh, but eventually uh, they um, have problems in communicating them and to make clear uh, you know, how the, their final impact and be used by the uh, community. So, for instance, having uh, crowdsourced maps and having um, data in charts and uh, on 
polygons uh, can become an easy way for uh, the other community to uh, understand what we do. So this is very uh, important. So for me, uh, for today, it's uh, that's all. Uh, I want you to you know go uh, on Public Makers uh, website. So it's uh, it's a very uh, you know something very important from uh, you know from our. Uh, it's very important uh, for us to uh, uh, enjoy a new way of uh, achieving the work of youth organizations. So not uh, only uh, having fun, but using the uh, digital tools to engage people in a new way. This is, this is crucial. So uh, for me, it's, uh, that's all. I invite you to the fourth um, uh, webinar. Uh, of our public makers project to discuss further about advocacy, particularly about the uh, possibility that youth organizations, sorry, youth organizations have to influence the power at different levels and how to do it through the um, power of strategy and reflection on data. So for me, that's all. Uh, I thank you for your attention and see you soon on Public Makers. Bye-bye.